are new, welcome. And don't be a stranger, yeah? Hit the subscribe button so that every single time we shoot on your video, you are in the know. In today's live, as you can see from the video, I'm going to be talking about the C1D US visa, also commonly known by a lot of people as the seafarer's visa. And in a minute, you're going to know why. So I'm going to give it one minute for people to come on board and then I will start speaking and guys kindly forgive me today I'm not going to be answering your questions um, on the live but feel free to leave them I will answer them once I finish because I only have about 30 minutes and I have to get back to work I was just on a short break and decided to do this video because it was requested by one of my um, subscribers who told me they have an interview next week and they requested that um, I, I, I do this video. So kindly bear with me. I will come back and um, um, answer the question. So I'm just going to talk through it and then I'll come back and answer the question. So as you join the live, kindly let me know where you are joining me from. And also, please um, give the video a like as you join in. Let me know where you are joining me from it helps with the algorithms it helps with the video so i'm gonna quickly start off so what is the c1d visa so the c1d visa is a united states visa it is a combination visa just the same way we have a b1 b2 visa we have c1d visa so c1 basically is a transit visa for anybody who is moving to an odd destination but going through the u.s and they are a non-u.s citizen and then the d visa is a crew member visa which means if you are serving in let's say um an aircraft or you're serving in a shipping vessel and um you are transiting through the united states then you're gonna need um this visa the d visa to help you connect through your ship or through your airline. So that's basically what the C1D visa is. So if you are traveling to a destination outside the US, you are a non-US citizen or a non-US permanent resident, then you're gonna need the C1 visa. If you are a crew member, then you're gonna need the C1D visa because you will be both transiting and sometimes also visiting the United States for work. So, um, the thing with the C1D visa is that it allows you to enter the United States only long enough to catch the next available ongoing flight or vessel out of the US. And that means you must have a pre-arranged itinerary every time you stop into the US. And you're not gonna be allowed to have any unnecessary layovers. Like let's say, I want to go and visit my brother. I want to go and visit my sister. No, you don't stop to go and you know shop and do stuff like that you're stopping there purely by virtue of your job c1d visa let's say you're a seafarer you are um let's say an airline pilot or um you are a return them here maybe a flight attendant you are a captain a cook a technician you are a drama you are a musician service staff whatever it is that you do on the ship so as a crew member on a D visa, you must intend to land temporarily, not for extended periods, and also depart the United States on the same or a similar vessel that you came on. So what that means is that when you get the D visa, the maximum allowed period for you to be in the US is 29 days. So what that means is that you must therefore have convincing reasons of why you need this visa okay so i think we've already talked about the c1d visa so in terms of eligibility any non-us citizen non-us permanent resident who is transiting through the us you will need a c1 visa which is a transit visa if you are a crew member i've said you're a commercial airline pilot you're a flight attendant a captain a cook um a technician drama musician whatever it is you work on a ship or you work on an aircraft you're going to need a c1d visa so in terms of application c1d visa application procedure is very similar to other non-immigrant visas like the b1 b2 which is for 
uh, business and pleasure you fill out your online non-immigrant application um, form that is the ds160 once you have done that you pay your visa fees and once you finished uh, you've paid your visa fees and then you book a visa appointment um, and depending on where you are based out of um, you will either go to the u.s embassy or the u.s consulate yeah so what documents then do you need for your um, C1D visa. So because this question was asked for by um, somebody and he, he, I think it's a he, he said he was having a visa appointment at the US Embassy next week. I'm going to assume you are either a crew member or you work for an airline. So I'm going to look at it on the version of somebody who is going to be working on either a ship or an aircraft. So what documents are you going to need? So number one, you're going to need your passport. So make sure your passport is valid for at least one year, not six months, at least one year from the date you'll be joining either your ship or the airline you're going to be working for. Then number two, you're going to need um, your uh, letter of appointment. If let's say you have been hired by an aircraft, let's say you're going to be working for, I don't know, American Airlines, or you're going to be working for um, a merchant ship like, um, I don't know, MV something have your appointment letter, have your job description, and then you're also going to have your letter, referral letter from your employer. You're also going to need, so remember this is a non-immigrant visa, which means that other than you going to get a visa to transit, or you also need to prove to the consular um, or the, the visa officer who's going to be handling your case that you have um, every reason, bona fide reasons, to enter the United States temporarily and you have no intention to immigrate. So that means everything else that, let's say, a B1, B2 visa applicants need, you're going to need. So if you have, like, your title deeds, you have your bank documents, you have um, your tax returns, you have a business certificate, you have... Um, your children's certificate, maybe you're married in your country, maybe you have um, a car, a car, what do you call it? I don't know what you call that thing for those. If you own a car, there's a paper they give you, <laughs> whatever that is, yeah, that shows ownership. So you're going to need that because remember, you still have to, this is a non-immigrant visa, you still have to prove to the visa officer that you have every bona fide reason to visit the United States and you have no intent to immigrate illegally into the US. So you have already applied for um, your um, C1 visa. You have already submitted your application online. You have gotten a visa appointment. You're now on the interview desk. What happens? So what you should expect at the interview, of course, um, in my experience, US visa interviews are very brief, straight to the point. Unless you're, um, especially for the non-immigrant visas, unless your case is very complicated, most interviews I have heard of, people will stay for a maximum, sorry guys, let me just log in. Um, people will stay for a maximum of um, 10 minutes. Actually, most interviews run between three to five minutes. So what that means is that in this three to five minute window, you have to convince the visa officer why they should not deny you a visa. Remember, according to the US, um, I think they call it Immigration Act or something, I forget it, I'm gonna quote it somewhere here. The moment you submit your visa application, it is assumed that you intend to immigrate and the onus is on you to prove otherwise. So that means the default answer you expect from the consulate from the officer who's handling your case is a no. So the honors is on you to prove why the, the, the answer should be a yes. So of course they're gonna ask you a few questions. Um, most of the time they're gonna start with the information you entered in your DS-160 form. Remember there's one section where they're gonna ask you why do you want to travel to the United States? So of course they're gonna ask you questions around your profile so you must know why you want to travel to the United States. So they're going to ask you what most probably what is in your profile or the DS-160. And then most probably the next set of questions they're going to ask you is around your job. Why do you want a C-1D visa? I am an airline pilot. 
I am a dancer on the ship. I am a technician. I am a cook. I am a chef. I am a server. I am whatever I am. So what that means is that you must have as much information as possible about the job that is taking to the United States. I cannot stress that enough. Have as much information and that's why I am still insisting guys by the fact that you're going to get a job on either that aircraft or that merchant ship. I know I believe in my heart of hearts you are intelligent enough to fill in your own visa application. And why do I always insist on you having to fill in your own visa application? Is because it gives you a sense of what is in that document. Secondly, I encourage you, highly, highly encourage you, look for the jobs by yourself. Yeah? You wanna work in an airline, you wanna work, I mean for an airline, you wanna work in a ship, whatever it is, be the one who's looking for those jobs. Don't just sit there, wait for somebody to do for you the application. Don't wait for somebody to be the one to fill out, write for you your cover letter. And I'm going to tell you in a bit why that is important. I want you to own your application process, starting from when you're looking for that job until when you go to the embassy. And it is very important. I know by virtue of where we come from, most of us um, think that these things are very complicated and somebody must do for us these applications because I don't know, no. And that's the whole premise of this YouTube channel. If you go to the about page of my YouTube channel, it clearly indicates that on this channel, I show you how you can navigate the visa process so that you can submit your own application even without the help of an agent. So I will give you, I remember there's a time I was going to work in Haiti and from Kenya, there are no direct flights to go to Haiti. So that means I had to transit to the United States. When I went to the, I was going to work for an organization called Mercy Corps. It's spelled Mercy Corps, you know? So the only question the consular asked me is, how do you pronounce the name of your employer? Fortunately for me, I did, I, I learned French in high school. So I asked the visa officer, which pronunciation do you want? Do you want the Kenyan pronunciation or do you want the French pronunciation, which is correct? And I, she said, I want both. So I told him in English, it's pronounced Masikops. That's what Kenyans, Kenyan English would pronounce it, Masikops. But in French, which is the right pronunciation, it is Mercy Koch. So can you imagine if I had not applied for my job by myself, if I didn't have the French background, or if you don't have the French background, it's just important for you to even know how does, what is the pronunciation of your employer's name? Like what is the, what's the name of the employer? So something as basic as that. And I think that's the only question I was asked. And I think from the visa officer's point of view, the fact that I took the time to actually even know how to pronounce um, my employer's name shows that I pay attention to detail and they could trust me with this visa. So guys, know as much as possible about your employer. Don't just sit there, somebody did this application for you they are the ones who, they, because they, they can ask you anything. And um, actually, I know somebody who went for the visa interview for a C-1 visa. And the only question they were asked is, suppose there was a fire on board, what would you do? And fortunately for this lady, she had attended the training. She was very smart. She took her notes. She was listening. She was not just excited that, hey, I'm going to be on a ship. I'm going to go to the United States and disappear into oblivion. She actually sat through the class. She listened to the instructions. And when the visa officer asked her, she explained in so much detail. The visa officer was so impressed. They never asked her any question. So make sure you own your application process, both for the job and for the visa. And the reason why sometimes they're going to ask you details about your job, they want to know are you really interested in working for the, in this 
for this organization or you're just using them as a stepping stone to go and disappear into the United States. So some of the questions you can be expect to be asked around your job, for example, is this your first ship? Is this the first airline you're working for? Um, if it's not your first airline or it's not your first ship, how long have you been with them? If it's your first time, how long do you intend to work for them? How long is your contract? What is your job description? What exactly are you going to be doing? Can you tell me a summary of a day in your life on board the ship? Um, why do you want to be a seaman? Why do you want to be a flight attendant? Why do you want to be on a pilot? Why do you want to fly Kenya Airways and not Emirates? So be prepared. Go through your entire application. Ask yourself, why did I apply for this job? Why do I want to work for this company? Why do I want to work for this company that is going to be sailing in the U.S. Uh, waters, for example? So make sure you have as much information about your employer, about your job, about your application process. Own your process because you could be asked anything. And then, um, as I've already talked about the training, yeah, um, if they ask you anything about the job, you can explain it. But sometimes they may not ask you. So the point is, whatever question they ask you, be as simple, as precise, and complete as possible. Do not volunteer information that nobody has asked you. So for example, the question on, in case of a fire on board the ship, what would you do? Specifically answer that question and don't explain what you do, for example, if the ship sank, yeah? Just answer the question you have been asked. And then, um, as I already mentioned, this is a non-immigrant visa. So whatever questions you're gonna be asked, the whole purpose they're asking you is the visa officer wants to prove that you do not intend to sneak away into the United States once you arrive there. Therefore, I already mentioned you must have proof of social economic, financial, family ties to your job, this job that you're applying for, your home country, or your country of residence, yeah? Something else, the fact that you have been given a C1D visa does not guarantee that you will be allowed to enter the United States. So that's why your proof of not wanting to immigrate stands even after you have been given the visa. Okay, so what are some of the reasons why your C1D visa could be rejected at the application, sorry, at the interview? So number one, lack of documents. If you do not have enough documents to prove your ties, your visa could be rejected. So let's say you don't have a letter from your employer. Um, you don't have like um, maybe your... Um, job description, you do not have your um, contract, stuff like that. And then if you have questionable employer documents, so sometimes I have seen people who have been conned on the internet, been given fake jobs, and they go to the embassy and nobody can even trace who this person is. That's why I still insist on your job application process, on your visa application process. Do your due diligence and make sure that whoever it is that is hiring you, is actually a genuine merchant ship company, is a genuine um, cruise company, is a genuine airline. Okay, don't be conned. Own your process. Number three reason why your visa could be denied is failure to convince the visa officer that you have no intention of coming back to your home country. So remember, I have said the maximum allowable period of stay for your D visa as a crew member is 29 days maximum you can be allowed and still you can have your visa and still be denied entry so you must understand your job you must understand why you want this job you must um, show proof that you have reason to go back to your home country so if you have previously been denied your c1d visa and you're wondering whether you should reapply again I think before I answer that question, it's important for you to find out why was your visa denied in the first place. If your visa was denied and you have not changed the reasons or your circumstances have not changed from when you were denied, 
there's no point wasting your is it 160 us dollars remember the c1d visa is not a lottery what that means is everything is paid on do you intend to go back to your home country once you're um i don't know you finish um i don't know if they work in shifts or you finish your nine month period at sea for example if you're looking for a lottery kind of visa then you need to apply for the green card that one is based purely on luck and chance your c1d visa is not a lottery visa which means it's based on eligibility and remember you are assumed to be in an intentional legal immigrant and you have the onus is on you to prove otherwise so you have to be honest as i already mentioned that say the truth and don't volunteer information that has not been asked of you so i've already talked about the amount of time your visa is going to last probably five minutes or ten minutes at most and the visa officer has this short window period to make a decision on your visa the onus is on you to make them say yes last but not least you must have a plan b and i'm not just talking of a plan b for the sake of a plan b a literal plan b remember america is not heaven i keep telling people i've been there a couple of times it is not heaven heaven is up there so that means when if your visa is denied it's not the end of the world i have seen people cry hysterically at the embassy when their visas is denied because they clearly did not have a plan b and they have made it even onto the visa officer oh this was my only hope i was our only hope we have sold everything what do you expect us to do I have nothing to go back to you have just proven to the visa officer that indeed they did well to deny your visa because if you have already sold everything you own and you are the only hope for your community clearly if you go to america you're not coming back that's why i still insist have a plan b and that means if you currently have another job and you have gotten this seafarer job or this airline job do not quit until you get that piece of paper stamped on your passport and the other reason why it's important for you to have a plan b is because the visa officer handling your case might actually ask you what if i deny you your visa what is your plan yeah what do you plan to do in case your visa is denied so you can imagine if you had no plan b and then you start thinking on your feet you're just gonna mumble there you're just gonna start chewing your teeth and not knowing what to do which is not right in terms of documentation i've already mentioned only bring the necessary documents that prove your social economic financial and family ties and um, also are related to the work you're going to do and do not give out these documents to the visa officer until they ask you for them don't be the one who's quick to oh oh i even have no 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 you wait to be asked if they ask you then you give them but do not give information that nobody has asked you in fact there is um they call it the 221 g note that the visa officer will give to you um they'll request you via that note if they need additional documents from you so don't carry things that you don't need and as usual guys i always say have some money in your bank and it's not about the amount of money you have it's cash flow don't just live your life um like without records yeah even if you're living from paycheck to paycheck from hand to mouth let that money pass through a financial system that records it so that you have evidence of cash flow they don't usually look so much for how much money do you have unless of course you're applying for a student visa but they want to see has money been moving have you do you have um they call it what financial um what like do you have a financial footprint yeah is there a financial footprint like if they asked you for a six month bank statement is there something to show that money has been coming in and going out of your bank account and for those who are wondering we have an entire youtube channel Eva Mtali finance that shows you how to make money online get paid in euros get paid in um, dollars get paid in pounds and every video on that channel is based on my personal experience everything has screenshots and none of those jobs are scams they're all legit in closing make sure that as you submit your application as already mentioned know that 
it is not the end of the world. And just the fact that you have a C1 D visa does not guarantee you entry into America, you can still be denied entry. You can be denied landing, and I know people who have been denied landing. And then one advice I would give you, if let's say you get given your C1D visa, it's not the first time you're applying for it, and you already had a C1D visa that let's say had expired, and you had utilized well, you had not extended your stay, you had not abused it, you can take advantage of your C1D visa interview and request for a B1, <coughs> excuse me, And request for a B1, B2 visa. And the reason is because remember your C1D visa is strictly for transit and for you as a crew member, if let's say your ship lands in the US and you might need to, you know, visit for a few minutes or a few days, maximum 29 days. But it does not allow you to just go to the United States for whatever reason you want. But you can still request for your B1, B2 visa when you apply for your C1D visa. Maybe, and I would encourage you, maybe after the C1D has expired and you have gone to renew it, and you can show proof that indeed you didn't abuse the C1D visa, then you can request the visa officer, hey, I wouldn't mind I'm getting a B1, B2 visa so that even when I am um, away from work, I can still visit the United States. Um, if you are on a merchant ship for example that lands on u.s waters as a crew member you must have a valid c1d visa and if you do not have a c1d visa you will be denied um landing and detained on board and there are actually customs and border protection officers that do spot checks on the ships to check so you don't want to be in trouble and do not try to leave your ship or your airline if you do not have your C1D visa. Even when you have a B1, B2 visa, most customs and border protection officers will not allow you to land if you do not have that visa. So guys, I allow me to leave. As I've said, I do not have um, time to answer questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I will come back and answer them because my break is over and I have to go back to the regular job that pays the bills. Thank you so much for staying at the very end. And I hope, um, I think it was Elvis, or I can't remember the name of the one who asked this question. I hope I have answered your question and I wish you all the best in your visa interview next week. Please come back and let us know how it went. There's 21 of you online. There's only nine likes. Guys, please give the video a like and let me know where you are viewing me from. It helps me to know what videos to shoot and what to talk about. Thank you. I will see you on the next one. Bye.